This video is sponsored by Ritual. Alright, so I could have sworn I covered this one before, but looking into it, last year I did Prom Night, and the year before that I did My Bloody Valentine, so heck yeah, Valentine is on the menu, baby. Since we all know February is the month of cynically commercialized romantic gestures, there's no better way to continue my somewhat annual tradition of schlocky slasher flicks than to explore a Scream derivative where its killer literally wears a cheap plastic cupid mask. 2001's Valentine tells the story of five girls, who each begin receiving mysterious death threats in the form of Valentine's cards from someone with the initials JM. At first, Detective Leon Vaughn suspects the perpetrator to be an abrasive narcissist called Jason Marquette, who went missing on the same night he went on a date with one of the girls called Shelley, who was coincidentally murdered that very same evening. However, it's immediately clear this is an effort to misdirect from the obvious set up, which sees the girls point fingers at a boy they bullied in high school called Jeremy Melton, who they falsely accused of sexual harassment after the rich kid of the group Dorothy claimed he assaulted her after she's mocked by her friends for smooching him behind the bleachers, causing Jeremy to be expelled and forced into a reform school, eventually ending up in a psychiatric hospital. I know I pretty much just spoiled the entire motive, but you would be naive to come into a film as unremarkable as this, thinking there's a clever conceit to keep you guessing, because the key distinguishing feature about the killer is that they have a constant nosebleed, which we learn is exactly what Jeremy has from the very opening. As such, unless Valentine is going to pull a bonkers plot twist out its ass where it's one of the girls or just some incidental killer, you only have a few limited men to choose from, with the overwhelming majority of them being nothing characters besides maybe David Boreanaz, but we'll come back to him later. Now, truth be told, I don't have a USP to give this film to desperately convince you it's worth watching, but if you're a sucker for a cheeky wee innocuous slasher flick, Valentine is what it is. As always, as we go along, leave those cheeky wee thoughts of yours in the comments below, including a like and subscribe, and lastly, here are a few words from this video sponsor, Ritual. So let me ask, do you have the perfect daily diet? Yeah, neither do I. But that's not to say we don't all try to improve ourselves, and specifically for my dad and I, that's where Ritual comes in. Ritual is a deliver-to-your-door monthly subscription that helps supplement gaps in your diet with a 10-nutrient multivitamin containing the likes of vitamin A, D, omega omega-3 and zinc, but without shady additives, fillers, or colorants. In fact, Ritual's core ethos is built on consumer transparency in the most literal ways. Their website provides easy-to-read research studies and breakdowns of the various ingredients, where they're sourced and even their environmental impact, and aim to disregard the pseudoscience and half-truths that plague the internet. Each capsule is vegan-friendly, non-genetically modified, gluten-free, allergen-free, sugar-free, and has a delayed release to make it easy on the empty stomach, and includes a cheeky mint flavoring to keep your bottle fresh. You can select from a range of capsules targeted to specific age groups and requirements. However, it's not all vitamins. Ritual also has a symbiotic and essential protein range, the latter of which is perfect for a good post-workout detox or simply something to sip during the day. Ritual includes free delivery, easy cancellation, and a money-back guarantee if you don't feel it's right for you. So why not take a small step that helps support a healthy foundation for your body with 20% off your first month using my link and code RyanH-20 at checkout. And here's some advice. Don't share them with your 65-year-old dad because he'll leave you with a near-empty bottle. And I, I know he's watching this. That's right, I'm calling you out, old man, but I'm too scared to do it in person. Director Jamie Blanks has been an absolute champion on Twitter regarding the film, as he really did the best he could with the four-person pen script he had to work with. In fact, I only found out when writing this review that the film is actually an adaptation of an obscure novel by Tom Savage, which sounds like it has a more focused premise by dealing with a singular character who's relentlessly stalked by a killer seeking vengeance. Obviously, I haven't read it, but there's always at least one of you out there who definitely has, so feel free to share your comparison in the comments below. Yet, regardless, it all boils down to the same idea. The killer is out for revenge after his life was ruined by a group of girls who are now receiving their comeuppance for their immoral actions. Basically, it's I Know What You Did Last Summer, Prom Night, and Urban Legend combined, the latter of which being Jimmy Blank's previous film, which showed a lot of promise by trying to elevate your typical 90s slasher with some contemporary nuances about college life and gossip culture, but you can always watch my video on that if you're interested. Anyway, 
way, I'm stretching pretty far to say Valentine does make a bit of an effort at social commentary in the form of romantic entitlement. The entire story is framed from the perspective of these five girls, as they endure a constant meal gaze from weird creepy men who have no respect for boundaries in their grossly unsubtle advances and outright be behaviour. The only exceptions are Dorothy's boyfriend Campbell and Kate's on-off its complicated boyfriend Adam, the former being perceived as a potential opportunist, trying to take advantage of Dorothy's family wealth to fund his vague business venture, as insinuated by his furiously antagonistic ex Ruthie, and the latter being an emotionally detached alcoholic who's surprisingly barely in the film. You would think David fucking Angel Boreanaz would be integrated more meaningfully into the film, considering he was essentially shit-hot star power at the time. He's perfectly cast in a film like this, given his strong, savvy, seductive, sexy vampire energy, but with a troubled, sensitive soul deep within. However, he's kinda given the Drew Barrymore treatment, not so much in that he dies early on because we would all riot if that happened, it's more so he's plastered all over the marketing but only sparingly shows up in heavily downplayed scenes until the climax. Side note, it's kind of ironic I'm talking about a movie that deals with the meal gears and here I am simping for David Boreanaz, but even my girlfriend understands I can't resist his screen presence. One thing I did find odd about the film's opening was that it sets up a group of meal bullies in cahoots with the girls, but none of them ever show up as adults later on. It feels like making the other meal figures in the girls' adult lives the bullies would have rounded off the whole revenge plot, but the reason I think it does this is to maintain a certain amount of mystique around these new men and mark them as potential suspects, seeing as they're not exactly the warmest characters to get attached to. Ultimately, what I think brings down the main theme of the film is that it doesn't fully commit to the idea of sexual toxicity and the meal gears perpetuating female vulnerability, even in settings and situations that seem ordinary. In fact, even for a slasher flick, there's a noticeable lack of visual voyeurism despite the perverted presentation of certain characters, like Kate's neighbour, who's later murdered after being caught breaking into Kate's apartment to play with her underwear. When you consider the film released around the time when grossly inappropriate sex comedies were all the rage, Valentine certainly de-romanticises the behaviour showcased in those films by essentially making every character seem untrustworthy in their own way. Hell, the film even makes direct reference to Jeremy Melton being on a sort of revenge of the nerds type scheme, which calls direct attention to an 80s teen comedy that infamously downplayed However, I think the biggest shocker to bring home the film's theme is actually Detective Vaughn, who despite spending the entire film trying to help these girls and advise them to look after each other, drops his persona to molest one of the girls called Paige alone in the police station. He attempts to justify his advances as Paige supposedly giving him flirtatious looks, but what's interesting about her character is that while she's the most, I guess, playfully feisty and sexually active of the group, she also also rightfully condemns being objectified by men, who think the only thing she's looking for is sex and thus feel entitled to treating her like dirt. In my opinion, Paige is by far the most compelling character because, like Boreanaz, Denise Richards seems to be cast to defy and subvert a stereotype. In shallow sex comedies, for example, the character would likely be typecast as saucy and over-sexualized. In fact, Scary Movie directly parodied this with Shannon Elizabeth. But here, it's made clear she desires equal human connection, not just another man treating her as an object, which is a recurring pattern with most of the men in the film. You could also argue it further ties into the Cupid metaphor, as we have these women actively seeking romantic relationships throughout the film, but in a sort of monkey paw style way, it's almost as if they hypnotically attract the worst kind of men. Taking into account the superstitious feel of urban legend, all the erotic allure projected from the kind of sexy thrillers Valentine derives from is presented as utterly poisonous, especially during the weird erotic art exhibition that's supposed to be seductive, but just comes off as sleazy. Right, so I think I've said all I really can about the characters at this point so that we can finally get into the killer's escapades. So you know the drill by this point, brace yourself.
To be honest, I almost forgot Valentine was a slasher flick because there are massive gaps between the body count and the actual scenes themselves are surprisingly quick and efficient. To Cupid's credit, he doesn't toy with his victims. He sends maybe two or three creepy Valentine's cards and then shows up randomly and takes out his victims before they have a chance to react. It does give it that humanizing factor that Scream has where the killer is somewhat clumsy, so having him surprise his victims with a quick death, Bar Page, who gets an unpleasantly mean-spirited execution fits the believability. The problem is, it feels like huge chunks of the story are missing. There's so little time spent developing mystery or motive, with the missing suspect Jason apparently being discovered off-screen, making for an extremely weak red herring. This also includes the detective, who despite the tense setup between him and Paige, is unremarkably decapitated off-screen during the last act, where Dorothy hosts a house party taken straight out of Scream. From here, we basically see a few murders happen unbeknownst to the party guests before they're eventually forced to leave so we can have our final showdown. It does make a loose effort to address the shitty actions of its characters that caused Jeremy Melton's downfall, but it largely focuses on the douchey rich girl Dorothy who instigated the false accusations. Kate is shown to be the exception within the group as the killer isn't actively targeting her because she wasn't involved in Jeremy's accusations. In fact, she's the one character to show any hint of likeness towards him, so if you put two and two together with who she eventually ends up with, the reveal isn't all that surprising. In other words, of course David Boreanaz is the fucking killer. It's suggested he changed his identity and appearance to Adam to infiltrate Kate's group, exact revenge, and have Kate all to himself because what's a slasher movie if it doesn't have contrived logic in there somewhere? Him being a recovering alcoholic with supposed anger issues is apparently the hint of his true nature, but we literally learn nothing else about him to get a real impression on how to feel. Although, in some respects, it works as a way to convey dissonance in his relationship with Kate, since he houses ulterior motives. So him being an almost nothing character does inadvertently play into the emptiness of the film's romantic undertone. It's also a nice touch that the only way you know he's the killer is because of the visual nosebleed instead of directly telling us. Eventually, after the party ends, Kate runs runs away from Adam because of his obviously sinister let's dance in a dark empty house alone behaviour, only to run into Cupid, who's then shot dead by Adam, revealing Dorothy in the costume. The last shot of the film sees Adam comforting Kate after calling the police, unbeknownst to her that Adam has a bloody nose. I gotta say, it's actually a pretty evocative payoff. Adam slash Jeremy frames Dorothy for the murders in a sort of twisted irony where her reputation is destroyed as comeuppance for doing the same to him, rounding off this theme of entitlement where Jeremy seizes emotional control over the one girl who ever showed niceness towards him. And that is Valentine. It has some neat ideas, but as I said, you know what kind of fast food you're getting with these types of films, so don't come in expecting anything special. It's almost as if it's no more meaningful than a holiday designed to capitalize on your guilt and emotions. So until next time, stay safe, stay away from bloody noses, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.